put your hands together for the king of kings. The people were speaking the word of life, the word of prophecy to the atmosphere. So we decree that every atmosphere here right now be healed. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said there's somebody here who begin to sing a new song. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord says somebody's sorrows have come to an end today. Yeah. In the mention of Jesus. Yeah. And somebody standing at the crossroad. Daddy says he will give you a direction. Yeah. In the mention of Jesus. Yeah. Daddy, thank you for the interruption. Yeah. Bless, us. We bless your name, Lord. I decree that today will be a day never to be forgotten yeah. in somebody's mind. Yeah. Thank you, Daddy, Thank you, for praying with us, giving and a clap offering to the Almighty God. Yeah. 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 And a shout of hallelujah. Because of the way we clapped, Daddy says that abnormal growth in somebody's body has started to melt. Thank you. I want to thank my brother, Pastor Kulusho, and my sister, Pastor Lua Tunyu, for giving me the privilege to share here. Anytime I come here, I'm blessed. Richly blessed. And I also learned a lot from the way. To do things in this place. Chapel of praise. May your life be full of praise. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I also want to thank all the ministers, all the workers. And I decree in the name of Jesus that you get godly reward. Amen. As you serve him in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, someone at nine, someone at nine, verses one to five. Pray for me. Psalm 139, verses, verses 1 to 5. The Bible says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue. For behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have etched me behind and before, and laid your hand upon me. Amen. Amen. Today I want to speak briefly and make prophetic declaration of what I call the power of God's hand. The power of God's hand. And I want you to be very sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. Because as the word of life comes forth, it is possible for your case to be mentioned. And if your case is mentioned, please receive it personally, receive it boldly, and run with it. Amen. Amen. Many of us may not know that the year is coming to an end already. It looks to me as the fastest year I've ever seen. January, February, March, and suddenly we are in July. Something significant about July is that July is a month of perfection. Amen. So whether the devil likes it or not, this month, your circumstances, your situation shall be perfected. Amen. And this has to happen because the month of August will be a month of new beginning. Amen. And I know that some people will have shouts of victory. Amen. Into the month of new beginning. Amen. In the mountain of Jesus. Amen. I'm glad, extremely glad to announce that God has given us some promises for today. And if any of the promises is yours, make sure that your amen is loudest. Amen. The Lord says it will repair foundations to the extent that evil and sensual spirits will be destroyed. Amen. Amen. Daddy says, gates and everlasting doors shall be uprooted. Yeah. That's why I had to make those declarations at the beginning. Then there are some <coughs> ungodly inheritances. There are the real godly destinies. All of them shall be removed. Yeah. Many are in chains and shackles of bad habits. 
the shanks will not only be broken, they shall be removed. Amen. And then there are some evil spirit that contaminate joy. Mm. Every spirit that contaminates joy shall be destroyed. Amen. Can you imagine a situation where a woman gives birth to a new baby and will begin to rejoice and the mother dies? Mm. Plus one minus one. That will not be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you imagine a situation when a man and a woman are happily married, joyous, and year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, no food for the home? Daddy says every semblance of barrenness mm. in your lives mm. shall be destroyed this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. A lady gave me a phone call from Nigeria. She said, Pastor Nero, I need to pray for me. When she spoke, I thought it was a case of barrenness. No. The woman had been pregnant for 12 months. 12 months. And I said, what's going on here? He said, people say that the pregnancy has been nailed. We made prophetic declaration that whoever nailed that pregnancy, if the person does not remove the nail immediately, his or her own life is nailed. Everything nailed in your life. In the name of Jesus. They become unnailed. And everything you could have missed because of the nailing, because of the suspension, my father will restore. In the name of Jesus. And that it says that God will fill many mouths with songs and laughter. You know, you need to learn to laugh at the devil. When this kind of prophecy comes, you say amen and give the Almighty God a, a laughter offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let, let's go again. God will feed many mouths with songs and laughter. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead and give the Almighty God a clap offering. The God of laughter will never end in your life. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. It is better and easier for us to set the atmosphere loose for the Holy Spirit to move easily. Hallelujah. Amen. The hand of God, or the power of the hand of God. We've got to gain some revelations from the Holy Spirit from basic definitions of the word hand. So what does hand mean? Number one, hand refers to the upper part of man's body that consists of the wrist, the fingers, and the thumb. And we know it is the terminal end of the arm. So hands are used for performing tasks. Hands are used for doing what? Oh, yes. yes, to doing chores, to do so many things. So therefore, the hand of the Almighty God are also for performing tasks. So what kind of task Extraordinary miracles. How am I sure? In Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verses 11 to 19. Acts 9, verses 11 to 19. We see the way God transformed Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor of Christ, to Paul, the preacher of the gospel. That he says there's someone here whose life shall be transformed. Amen. From a life of failure to a life of success. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And recently, someone received a negative report concerning his or her health. That he says his hand had just altered the report. Amen. And that sickness, whether it is named or unnamed, whether it is known or unknown, that sickness has dried up right now. Amen. In the matter of Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you what happens sometimes because of the sins we commit when they are not covered by the grace of God and godly repentance. All these diseases that are new, that have been discovered, they always start afresh from somebody's life. So which means something in your body that necessarily does not mean is a disease may become a disease. When you contaminate your life with sin, and a new disease 
that doctors have not known will begin with such a life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. There's somebody here that the spirit of death has been falling all over the place. And you know that we are the one we are talking about because recently you lost somebody in your family prematurely. I take authority in the precious blood of the Lamb. And I stand on the rock that never fails. I decree that every spirit of death, every spirit of prematurity, they, 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 they become defeated right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and give that a clap of his somebody. As you were clapping, a wound that had been shot for a while became open. Then. Yeah. This is what happens when you are clapping and you are appreciating God, the host of heaven joined us. And when the host of heaven joined us, then satanic influences are in trouble. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. There's somebody here, your job is being threatened. Because of inability to perform, because you lose concentration. Daddy says he will take you from that job and give you a better job. Yeah. That will give you a that will give you a better job. Yeah. Put your hands together for the king of kings. Yeah. Don't mind me. If I'm not jumping up and down, I've always told you, I'm not a man of God. So I'm not designed to do all this acrobatic display and sweat and everything. No, I'm a son of God. Amen. Yes. And because I'm a son of God, I'd like to hear him talk to me. Yes. All right? Yes. The essence of you coming to church this day is because the plan of Satan becomes defeated in your life. Amen. In the record of Jesus. Amen. Number two. Hand means a person with reference to ability or skill. So we say he has a helping hand. Because someone who performs some skills for us, like a personal assistant, has a lot of skills. Maybe he or she can type, maybe he or she can drive, maybe he or she can cook, maybe he or she can do so many things for you. Because he has that skill. Well, I'm glad to let you know that the hands of God are also designed for skillful tasks. So if we begin to talk about God's ability and our skills, we will be here forever. We are talking about God who created the heavens and the earth. We are talking of God whose glories we see in all his creations. We see his power in rainfall. We see his power in snowfall. We behold his brilliance in the sunshine and in the rainbow. In Los Angeles, we behold his power in a little bit of earthquake sometimes. And you sleep on your bed and you feel the bed rocks as if you are in the ocean. Then we know that that's earthquake. The power of God. You see the power of God in flames. Body flames, body bush, bush, flames, they look fine, reddish, yellowish, but don't you dare touch it. The power of God. <laughs> the power of God is talking about the ability of God to perform and deliver. I want to tap into five dimensions of the power of God. We see blessings and miracles and never be ready to go home. Number one. The hand of God delivers. Period. Psalm 31 verse 15. He says, Psalm 31 verse 15. David said, My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. There is someone here whose covenant with evil is being neutralized right now. Amen. And the hand of God is touching you Amen. at this very moment. Amen. This means all evils concerning you, your family, 
and your situation are being neutralized right now. Amen. In the matter of Jesus. Amen. There's somebody here you stand in the position of envy from your family. They believe that you have arrived and you are not remembering them. They do not know that it is not as easy as they are thinking. And therefore, they are holding you. They are holding your progress. But as, for as long as daddy liveth, <laughs> because of the work that was done on the cross, every negative force is being sent to you. They become neutralized. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody here, however good something is, the moment you touch it, it is contaminated. So because of that, you cannot hold something nice. You don't lose it. Every relationship you touch becomes contaminated. Every fine object you attempt to touch, as soon as you touch it, the fall down and they break. Daddy says that he has changed your hand Amen. to a hand that repairs and enhances. Amen. Rather than a hand that destroys. Amen. Go ahead and give that a shot. Is that a place you can do for the kingdom of God? Thank you, Lord. From now henceforth, whatever you touch, from now henceforth shall become better. Amen. Amen. Which means your matrimony shall be better. Amen. Your business shall be better. Amen. There will be greater anointing in your life in the matter of Jesus. Amen. Whoever you shake from now henceforth will receive a handshake from the Almighty God. Amen. In the matter of Jesus. Amen. Number two, the hand of God protects. The hand of God protects. In 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 28, we see another dimension of the hand of God. The Bible says, Therefore Saul returned from pursuing David and went against the Philistines as they called that place the rock of escape. <laughs> The rock of escape was where David and his men hid when Saul pursued them. We are talking about the hand of God that protects. Today, I pray that God will continue to pray for, provide for you ways of escape as your enemies pursue you. Amen. Or you think you don't have enemies? I'm sorry for you. The moment you say you are a Christian, you are already drawn into a battle. And that is it. Many of us are so careless, we do not, we do not call upon the name of the person that is leading us into battle every day. We don't do it, but you are involved in a serious battle. And that's why the Bible says in Proverbs 18.10 that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are saved. You know, Bible doesn't waste what the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous does what? Runs into it. And because for the righteous, something is always pursuing the righteous. The Bible says that your enemy is roaming around the wilderness of this world, trying to devour you. And I'm praying that. Daddy will keep you Amen. several steps ahead of the enemy. Amen. In the matter of Jesus. Amen. And if nothing is pursuing you, at least you will be pursuing something. <laughs> so you should be on your toes at all times. You must be running. Say, Pastor, what are you pursuing? You are pursuing divine health. That's why you should be careful of how you eat and what you eat in this America. That's why you should be careful of the kind of friends you will keep. I realize now 
that you need to do the evaluation of your friends or relations that you keep. There are some you need to elevate. There are some you need to demote. There are some you need to terminate. Because we are in a battlefield. And nobody puts his hand on the plow that gets his life entangled with other distractions. Tell your neighbor, say, Pastor is talking to you. <laughs> the Lord says that your days of running are over. Amen. And that the decisions you have been seeing in your life you will never see again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And those pursuing you will now begin to flee from you. Amen. Otherwise, they perish. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That says that somebody here whose soul is joined in evil association with somebody close to you. I you do not know. A parasitic element is joined to your soul. A parasite is joined to your soul. And he or she is sucking your blood. I am praying in the name of Jesus that God Almighty Himself will dissolve every unprofitable association in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for the best. Amen. A young man came to pick me this morning to church. We were discussing, we were discussing, we were discussing. I was asking questions and was answering me. We became friends and then so many things. The moment he dropped me, that he says to me that that young man is set apart for extraordinary miracles. Yeah. The word of the prophet must come to pass. Yeah. And because of the way you said amen, the same blessing amen. that God has poured on that young man will be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, the hand of God as a place of hiding. Let us recap. We said the first one, the hand of God delivers. Right? right. The second one, the hand of God protects. Yeah. Right? right? Number three, the hand of God as a place of hiding. In Psalm 31 verse 5, the psalmist prayed, he said, into your hand I commit to my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. In 2 Samuel 2, 22 verse 2, 2 Samuel 2, 2 verse 2. We see the God presented as our deliverer. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Fortress means on an unassailable hiding place. When the Lord delivers you, He hides you where you can no longer be afflicted. Thank you, Lord. That is says there is someone here your father was caused by his own father out of anger. And that cause appears to be manifesting even in your life right now. And you are not even alive when that happened. That is says that that cause has now been neutralized. Amen. You know, you are in your life. Amen. In the Amen. Amen. And the way you know that we are the one that daddy has delivered is that saying that have been difficult for you before now begin to become easy Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And yet there is another person here who operates under the yoke and bondage of an addiction. Addiction. You don't like to do it. You cannot help yourself. That is says he has taken away the addiction. Amen. So it is left for you to hand over the addiction to him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The Lord is gracious to us, especially today. Amen. I know there are one or two people here 
who will begin to demonstrate the power of God through Christ in everything they lay their hands upon. Amen. Amen. On Friday, we talk about the spirit of excellence. And many of you are not here then. But God knows that the spirit of excellence has been deposited in this assembly. Amen. Therefore, we begin to operate with excellence in the name of Jesus. Amen. But excellence is not talking about Ashwebi. It's not talking about colors or fuchsia or whatever those colors, no. Excellence is talking about results. Excellence is talking about extraordinary performance. Excellence is talking about output. From now henceforth, there will be great output to your efforts. In the name of Jesus. How many of us are full of expectation in some areas of our life? Well, I'm glad to announce to you that your expectations shall never be cut short. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Put your hands together for the King of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number four. Hand of God as a hand of judgment. <laughs> hand of God as a hand of judgment. You know, if you are doing what is right, Do not back down. The world may bring persecution against you. You may be tormented. But as we land on Friday, it is when we are persecuted that we are able to manifest the excellence of God Almighty. Because we are pushed to a wall. And when we get when our back is against the wall in persecution, in betrayal, in disappointment, then we lift up our eyes. The Almighty God who is able to deliver us. Ezekiel 25, verses 16 and 17. Ezekiel 25, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines, and I will cut off the Jerusites and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. I will execute great vengeance on them with furious rebukes. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. Let me just share a small testimony with you. Uh, we met the pastors, not pastors here, the provincial pastors. We held a meeting sometimes uh, six months ago last year. Last year, we agreed that the leadership training for North America will take place in Los Angeles this year. But some of us look at Los Angeles and believe that it's too far. There are not enough people, there are not enough churches there. And they are right. They said, let's take this program from Los Angeles and take it to Houston, where there are many churches. And that was it. And that was changed immediately. Michelin was very furious. Then the Lord told me, I said, when I get to the meeting, I'm going to fight everybody. When I got to the meeting, the Spirit of God came upon me and said, Lord said, don't fight them. It is because it's not yet time. I didn't understand why I had a peace. I didn't fight anybody. Only to discover that even though the leadership training was taken from Los Angeles and given to Houston the same year, the same season, two national programs have been yamaked for Los Angeles. The Yasin program that took place last weekend, it was, it was marvelous. And you know, God sent testifiers that took the report to our headquarters. And not just that, Los Angeles has now been yamaked to host Festival of Life for the first time in October 24, this year. Why a program was taken away, two national program. In fact, the Rama International Program. I want to pray for you that whatever is taken from your life in blessings, that it will supplement Amen. with double blessings. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I also want to pray for you that you keep your peace 
and daddy will fight your battles. Amen. Put your hands together for the kingdom. Now, in many instances, excuse me, what do you say the name of this place is? And you are clapping like that for the Almighty God. Come on, put your hands together. There's somebody in that corner that um, people have been judging you wrongly, that have been condemning you unjustly. Now they say I should encourage you that every tongue that be rising against you will begin to praise you. Yeah. In the method of Jesus. Yeah. There are one or two people in the house this morning. Your righteousness are deliberately misunderstood as spiritual arrogance. Consequently, you suffer unnecessary persecution. Daddy says, your days of persecution are over. Yeah. He says, it will restore unto you multiplied everything you have been wrongly denied. Yeah. In the method of Jesus. Yeah. I don't know what you have <coughs> done to deserve this kind of blessing. But I have an idea. I want you to put your hands together for Pastor Felicia. And also Pastor Twain. We've been pastoring for about 22 years. I've been supervising churches all over the place. And I've moved around a lot. The places have not been to an exception. Preach all over the major city of America, UK, China, all over. This pair, they amaze me. I've never seen a pastor, a pastor, Mrs. who are so dedicated to the work of God, the way they're dedicated. As well as I get frightened. I get frightened. Because anytime I call from Los Angeles, they are either on their way to church, or their way back from church, or they are in the church. They are the only couple that I know conduct two services or partake in two services every Sunday. I came to church with them yesterday. I said, yeah, you people still go for choir practice? They said, no, no. We leave them, they have been their own thing. But because their leader is not around, they got to show. I said, I will follow you. I followed them by Saturday. there. After listening to powerful practice, loud one, I said, oh, over there, I pastor, you took my picture. Put your hands together for I know I'm a very smart man. When you see a couple dedicated to God like that, I join my friendship with them. Because then, like an old bachelor as, that appears to want to run down, you couple it with a younger bachelor, fresh <laughs> bachelor, <laughs> you remain young forever. <laughs> hey, but you need to be wise. <laughs> what I've done is in the book of James. So those who want to be wise, we walk with those who are wise. Those who want to remain eternally 